Julie Nicholas. I am a graduate student at Southern University. I am in the Family Nurse Practitioner Program. Today I will be performing a head to toe assessment on this lovely lady as part of my completion of my Nursing 606 class, Health Assessment and Diagnostic Reasoning. Um, uh, with her consent, we would you perform the head to toe assessment. Before this video started, we had checked her vital signs, blood pressure, pulse, respirations, and temp, height and weight with all within normal limits. We checked her vision, her smelling chart. She has 20-20 vision. She wears no contacts or glasses. Um, that was uh, checking her optic uh, nerve, cranial nerve two. Okay, so we'll begin. Can you tell me your name? Caitlin. And can you tell me your date of birth? January 6th, 1994. And where are we now? Care for Louisiana. And what are we doing? Head to toe assessment. Great. She's awake, alert, oriented, uh, times four. So first we're going to look at her skin distribution. We're just looking at her skin. We're always looking for scaliness, lumps or bumps. Always looking at the nervi, making sure there's no suspicious lesions. I'm going to feel the temperature of her skin with the dorsal part of my hand. It's cool here, warm and dry here. Making sure there's no edema or anything, any swelling. Now I'm going to look at her head and look at her hair distribution. As I'm parting all her hair, I'm looking for any scaliness, any hair loss, alopecia, any infestations. And now I'm going to palpate her scalp. Let me know for any lumps and bumps or tenderness, any that hurts. That was great. Okay, so now I'm looking at her face. I'm also gonna always check like the symmetry of her face, making sure, um, and this part of the video, we're mostly gonna be assessing the right side, but no, you should also assess right to left. Um, when I look at her face, I'm making sure there's no involuntary movement. There's no facial twitching. There's no uh, paralysis on one side. Can you raise your eyebrows? Can you frown? Smile, puff out your cheeks. Very good. So that was assessing cranial nerve seven. Now if you close your eyes and if you can tell me if you feel if it's um, soft, dull, or painful. Soft. Soft. Very good. Now was assessing cranial nerve five, which is the trigeminal nerve. So now we're gonna look at our eyes, which will be assessing cranial nerves three, four and six. So first you just inspect the eyes. I'm just looking at, once again, symmetry of her eyes, looking at her pupils, making her eyes, looking at her sclera, making sure they're, uh, they're white. And I'm looking at her conjunctivitis, pink. Glabulum apparatus, making sure that there's no drainage. And then no, uh, her eyelids are not puffy or scaly or um, any lesions to her eyelids. Now I'm going to check her pupils. So maybe if you could just turn in with the light. Pupils constrict, direct, and consensual. And then now um, I'm going to do her uh, I'm going to check her uh, her extraocular motor movements. Sorry about that. Okay, follow my hand up. Very good. So no uh, no strabismus noted, and no nystagmus also noted with that test. Now I'm going to do um, her red reflex. This is just checking. I'm coming at loud. This is my uh, under Scott's mouth. Just look straight ahead, and I'm checking for her red. Red reflex noted. So now we're going to check her uh, her ears. First, we're looking at the ear. We're going to look at the outer part of the ear, um, her oracle. This is her tragus. We're going to palpate the tragus. Tell me if there's any pain. Mm -hmm. We're going to um, do a tug test on her oracle, pulling it up and back. Does that hurt? Mm -hmm. And then palpating the mastoid process. Does that hurt? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, now we're going to inspect her ear. Membranes, pearly gray, 
Sound of Light is at 4 o'clock. Very good. Now we're going to um, test her hearing, which is the acoustic cr uh, cranial nerve 8. Ma'am, can you include your left ear? Baseball. Very good. Now at that time, if she was unable to hear, um, at that time I could do two other tests. I could do the Weber test for lateralization and then the Ryan test for bone conduction compared to air conduction. Very good. So now I'm going to look at, um, I'm going to check her nose. We're just looking, like I said, once again, symmetry of her nose. I'm going to look at each snare, making sure that there's no bogginess. It's pink. Sept, uh, septum's midline. I am going to check. Can you um, occlude one of your uh, nostrils? Very good. Now let me know. Smell something? Lavender. Very good. And I was checking cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve. And so now I'm going to look in her mouth. Noting first, I'm going to look at her lips. We're going to look at her tongue first. And if you can um, stick it. Stick your tongue out and wiggle it around. Very good. And then open your mouth now. Now when I look at her mouth, I'm looking at her hard palate, I'm looking at her soft palate, the sides of her mouth. I'm making sure that there's no any lesions. Lift up your tongue. I'm looking at the floor of her mouth, no white patches, all her teeth are intact. And then I am going to check her, I'm going to look at her, make sure her lubia, uh, uvula is midline and her tonsils. Stick your tongue out. Very good. Uvula is midline. Say ah. Uh. Uh. Great. Her, uh, her uvula was midline. Uh, her tonsils were grade two. At that time when I checked her mouth, her tongue, I was checking the uh, cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal. And then when she said ah, I was checking um, her ninth and tenth of cranial nerves, which is the glossopharyngeal and the vagus. So now we're going to go on to your neck. First, I'm going to have you, um, let's just set the mus muscles in your neck. So can you put your uh, chin to you? Okay, up. Uh, and then extension, look up at the ceiling. Okay. And turn your head side to side. Very good. Now I'm going to, can you push up? Very good. Cranial nerve 12 was intact. Uh, excuse me, cranial nerve 11 was intact. That's the spinal accessory. Okay. So now I'm going to look um, at her neck. Um, just making sure I'm going to palpate her lip nodes. Okay, so this is the submental, submandular, tonsillar, pre oracle, the post oracle, occipital, the superior cervical chain, posterior cervical chain, the deep cervical chain, supra. Clavicular, infraclavicular, that's good. So as I'm doing this, we are going to look at her neck now and just knowing the symmetry of um, her neck, make sure her trachea is midline. I am going to palpate her carotid, uh, cricoid process and then I'm going to assess her thyroid gland. Can you swallow you? Very good. So, um, her trachea was midline, no border noted, and I couldn't palpate her uh, her thyroid gland, which is uh, normal. So now I'm gonna look, we're gonna uh, go on to her, uh, her respiratory system, and if I can have you maybe at the seat. Very good. Well, first we're not seeing her respiratory system. I'm always gonna just check, make sure, anterior and posterior, just making sure that there's no any distress noted. The rise and fall of her chest is symmetrical both sides. No use of accessory muscles anywhere. Uh, I can also do the lung expansion test. Put both of my legs. Take a deep breath. The rise and fall of her lungs. I am going to do tactile feminis. Say 99. 99. 99. And then I would do the same in the back. 99. 99. 99. And that will be no consolidation noted. I would also confer cuts. And then the back ladder form, noting always right to left, no resonance noted. 
And then now I can also take her um, her long sounds. She's going to go in a quick motion. I would have her instruct her to take a deep breath in and out of her mouth. Always compare her right to left, then down and over. Same in the back, right to left, down, over, and a ladder form, and then all the way across the back. So no adventitious breath sounds noted. Now we're going to look at the cardiovascular system, looking at our heart and everything. Uh, first we're going to look at our neck, make sure that there's no jugular vein distension noted, uh, making sure that there's no pulsations. I'm going to, first I'm going to palpate her carotid pulse. And I'm going to do one side at a time. Then now I'm going to listen with the depth down the stethoscope. Very good. So no bruit noted. Uh, and also when I was palpating, no thrill felt for with her carotid. Now I am going to do her, um, listen to her, her heart sounds. The first heart sound is going to be Right side, second intercostal space is the aortic. Right side, intercostal space, aortic. Left side, second intercostal space is pulmonic. Left side, third intercostal space is the tricuspid, also known as Earth's point. Then the fifth intercostal space is mitral valve or the apex. So S1, S2 noted, if I would need to listen to S3 or listen, I would have her lay on her left recumbent position with the bell of my stethoscope to listen for any S3 um, sounds. So now I'm going to have you lay back and we're going to look at her abdomen. Always look at skin, always, always. Before you assess the abdomen, you all, before you touch it, you always want to inspect first. Then you want to also take all four quadrants, but when you're inspecting, you want to make sure that there's no pulsations in the aortic area. There is no uh, hernia noted in the umbilicus area. Listen to all four quadrants. And then now I'm going to percuss. And I'm listening for any light tipping or dullness. And then now I would palpate light to deep in all quadrants, making sure. And then I'm going to palpate the liver. Can you take a deep breath? Yeah, good. And then the liver's going to be soft around uh, smooth. But once again, when I was doing percussion, once I percussed the abdomen, if I wanted to percuss the liver span before I did my palpation, I could do it. Uh, mid uh, clavicular line, which would be six to 12 centimeters, or mid sternal, which is four to uh, eight centimeters to know the liver span. Um, also, I would palpate the other side for the spleen to, uh, um, for, to check for the spleen. Okay. So now I'm gonna do all her pulses, just check her pulses in general. So always comparing left to right. I'm gonna do her brachial pulse. Her radial, make sure that they're full. And I can do her femoral pulses. Then her popliteal pulse. Right back here. Then her dis her dysalis penis pulse. And then her posterior tibial pulse. Very good. Okay, ma'am, with your eyes closed, I want you to tell me which direction am I pointing your toe. I'm gonna to be checking for uh, joint uh, position. Very good. So now I'm going to be checking um, for the Babinski reflex. Just going to strike the foot like that. It should be negative in someone her age. Very good. Now once we did that, I am going to have you sit up and look to the edge and we're going to check your reflexes. Okay, first we're going to check the brachial radialis. The bicep, the tricep, the patella, and then the Achilles. Very good. Okay, very good. So now I am going to check her sensory. 
This test, may I have you close your eyes? This test is called the stero the stereogenos test. It is just a take for um so she can describe what object that placed in her hand. strength. I will have you squeeze my fingers real as tight as you can. Okay, and I'm going to pull and push back. Very good. Now, push your legs against my hand. Very good. Our strength is strong and equal. Now, I am going to um, have her do the coordination test. So, I'll have you kind of sit down with it. Be careful. And then what I want you to do is take your index finger, touch your nose, and then touch my finger. Now, can you take your right heel and pass it against your shin? You know this shin? Okay, you can do the other one. Very good. Very good. So now I'm going to check her back range of motion. So you can come sit here. Like you can. So I'll have her, we're going to first check flexion. So bend over and touch your toes. While she's doing that, I can assess the curvature of her spine, making sure that there's no scoliosis. Okay, very good. Now, can you extend your back bend? Very good. You can do that. And then lateral side to side. Very good. So now I'm going to assess her balance. This is called a Romberg test. I would have her stand here, cross your fingers just like that. First, I would do the test for 30 seconds. I would have her eyes open the first time. If there's any minimal swaying, it's okay, but if she would have any major swaying or loss of balance, that would be a positive test. I would repeat the test again with her eyes closed. Now I'm going to check her gait. If you could walk forward heel to toe, And then come back backwards. Very good. Tippy toes. Very good. Okay, so that complete that concludes my head to toe assessment.